We're here in the plush workshop and we've stripped down two of the best forks on the market. Olin's RXF38 and a Fox 38. Now you might have seen quite a few comparison videos online of these two forks, people riding them, telling you what the differences are. But I haven't really seen any videos where people actually completely strip them down and explain all the technologies and all the little, all little things and differences that are going on inside these forks. So we thought we'd strip them down and show you the chassis of the fork, the air spring of the fork, and the dampers of the forks, and show you the differences and similarities between the two. So let's get into it. There are quite a lot of similarities when it comes to the, to the chassis of these forks, just purely because there's not much technology that goes into a, a, a crown steerer or a, or a lower leg as much as there is in a, an air spring or a damper, for instance. So similarity-wise, they've both got floating axles and a pinch bolt. So this axle here actually allows this, this leg of the fork to float up and down on this axle, and then you tighten it down in the perfect place. So it means that the legs always stay parallel. Olin's have always had this axle, um, but Fox moved across to this axle two years ago, something like that. The biggest difference I'd say between the Olin's um, lower leg and the Fox lower leg are the bleed ports or the air bleed valves on the back of the Olin's fork. These little valves here, you can push them and they let any air that's ingressed into the fork through use out of the fork. And that will happen naturally just from the fork vacuuming in um, air as you use it through the through the seal. That's the, probably the main difference. The, the Olin's fork doesn't have those. Whether or not it needs them is, is a point of contention, I'd probably say. Um, but certainly on the Fox, they decided that their, their lower leg does need it. The Crown Steerer, CSU, or the stanchions, whatever you want to call them, the main difference here on the Fox one is the Kashima coating. You can see that classic, classic Fox gold coating that everyone goes mad for. It's a molybdenum disulfide coating in the anodizing process that they add. And that helps to just fill up the little gaps, the little micro pores in the aluminium. And that allows the seal to glide better over the, over the surface. There's less friction because there's less peaks and troughs on a microscopic level in the uh, surface of the aluminium. So that's um, probably one of the main differences between the two crown steer units. Um, they're both super stiff, they're both super strong. Now we can move on to the exciting bit, or the bit I find exciting anyway, I'm not sure if you find it exciting, but air springs first. Pretty simple piece of technology, uh, a tube, inside the fork, inside the fork leg there, and a piston assembly and a piston shaft with a seal on it, and that seal compresses the air that's trapped between this seal and the top cap seal. And that's all it does, just like squeezing a balloon. That's all the air spring does. These are our volume tokens. So what these do, they help to reduce the total volume of air in the positive air spring. They don't affect the negative air spring at all, but the more of these you run, the less volume there is available in the, uh, in the positive air spring, the higher the pressure will be, the higher the end pressure. Even if you start at the same starting pressure, say 100 PSI, once you're fully bottomed out, there'll be a big difference between the ending pressures if you have full tokens or no tokens. And they essentially allow you to tune the spring rate of your air spring. Uh, maybe if you ride somewhere super, super bumpy, you want the fork to track a bit better, you might run less volume tokens because you want a linear air spring, a spring that takes not as much force change throughout its stroke to get the fork to move. You want the wheels to track. The issue with these is that it's a binary change. So every time you add another token, it's exactly the same change. There's no, there's no variable. So it's always a binary change with, with Fox. With Olin's, as you'll see, you can get a bit more specific with it. They actually use a air piston assembly 
to apply uh, volume change to the positive air chamber. So we'll look at that next. So pretty similar stuff. You can see some pretty big similarities between these two. Obviously the, the surface area of these is, is quite different. So you're gonna get quite drastically different settings from these and this is why you end up with high pressure uh, in one fork and low pressure in the other or lower pressure but you hit the same sag setting for instance so you could have 130 psi in your in your Olin's fork but you put a fox fork on and it's only got 90 psi in, but you're getting the same sag just purely because of the surface area and the volume of each air spring is completely different in this tube we've got the piston going up and down so your piston would slide up and down inside this bearing here and then that little hiss that you hear when you set the fork up that's the air swapping past this o-ring into the blue negative air part of the um, of the air spring but the main feature of this air spring is in this bottom valve here so this bottom valve doesn't control the positive air this actually applies pressure to a floating piston this little piston here and this little piston sits in this shaft now the more pressure you have on this piston the less this piston will move when the fork is compressed if that makes sense so the harder this is the less volume there will be in the positive air chamber giving you more ramp the difference is uh, you can completely fine-tune how much pressure this little piston is under. So you remember when we were talking about the Fox fork, it had volume spaces that were um, a linear change. This you can do whatever change your digital pressure pump can, can um, detect half PSI. You can do half PSI changes in volume. So you can really, really fine tune. And actually, if you're an enduro racer, for instance, and you're racing lots of different tracks or different days, multi-stage days, and you know you've got bumpier stages or steeper stages, this is really nice to be able to adjust the ramp of the fork externally. Um, it just means that you can, you can do that on the trail, change the way the fork works completely for support or for bump compliance, and, and off you go. It's just such a great feature. And actually for me is, is a huge selling point for, for Olin's. It's such a great technology. So yeah, that for me sets this air spring aside from, from others on the market. Really simple design, quite hard to pull off, but they did it and it, and it works tremendously well. So that's the air spring of the two. Like I say, pretty, pretty similar, except for that ramp chamber and the way they deal with um, volume change. When it comes to the dampers, which are these parts here, so you can just about see two springs here. So we've got the Olin spring here and the Fox spring here. Very similar setups. It's just that there are tiny little nuances and performance benefits for, from one to the other, which we'll have a look at now. So how does the damper actually work then? Well. As you compress the fork, this piston displaces all the fluid, pushes all the fluid that's in the damper towards the compression assembly. Now you might have heard of compression and rebound. We've got both these things opposing each other in the fork. The top is our compression, that's having fluid push towards it. And then the rebound damper is having the fluid pulled. So it's pulling its way, sorry, it's pulling its way through the fluid back to full extension. So you've got compression happening into this assembly and rebound happening through this assembly. So super similar really, um, both systems. Uh, but they do deal with things slightly different. The Olin's uh, compression assembly works in a similar way. So you've got a needle that runs through the middle in a port there and then you've got some kind of way of stiffening the shims so again very similar to the fox you turn the high speed adjuster and it just 
changes the fulcrum point of the spring of, of the of the shims. Olins have had this a long time. Their TTX dampers have always worked like this. Fox moved over to this system again about two years ago. So again, Olins have got quite a lot of experience with this type of damper, and in my mind, they've perfected it. For me, having ridden both of these, I'm a huge fan of the RXF38. The Olins for it just feels more balanced, more controlled, easier to adjust in a way, externally adjustable. Um, and when you really get going, when you're really pushing, it tends to support you a little bit, a little bit better in my opinion. But we're gonna go out and actually blind test these forks properly. We're gonna test these forks, put them on a bike, ride them, and give you our thoughts on how they ride. But for now, that's the inside of the forks. We thought we'd show you that. Some interesting insight there into how they're made and the engineering, the differences, the similarities. Both are incredible. They're amazing little feats of engineering. And actually, when you take them apart, you start to really appreciate the, the, the sheer effort that's gone into just slowing your fork down for a bump. So hopefully that's been useful to you. But otherwise, thank you very much.